Hello, I'm Laura Coyle, and in this video, we're going to talk about making planner pages in Adobe Illustrator. And the timing couldn't be better because we're about to roll into 2023. So happy new year. And let's take a look at this page that I have here. It's kind of a time block weekly planner. And I've also created a blank artboard, eight and a half by 11 right next to it where we can get started. The first step that I want to do is set some preferences. So I'm using the shortcut command or control K and here I want to go into units and set the unit of measure for this document at uh, points. You can choose pixels or points. They're equivalent in Adobe Illustrator, but what we want is something small so that when we type into dialog boxes, we won't have to do fractions of inches and things like that. So uh, let's see, I'll go back to general before I click OK. And this is the other preference we want to set scale, strokes, and effects unchecked. That way, when we scale some of these uh, boxes and lines that we make, we can always maintain the same line weight. We're going to focus on a couple of tools here, one being the line segment tool. And with this tool, you can just draw straight line segments like this very simply. But the reason I suggest using this rather than just, you know, going and getting the pen tool and drawing a line like that is because these lines that you create uh, with the line segment tool are live. So it's kind of like a rectangle in Illustrator or an ellipse in Illustrator. You have, um, if we go up to the shape dialog box here, um, we can actually change the length of the line by typing into the box here. We can change the angle this way. So it's always something that's flexible you can come back and work with later. So let me delete these. The other tool that we're going to be working with is the blend tool. So let's start out by making a blend between two line segments. So I'm going to hold the shift key and drag with the line segment tool to create sort of the top of my um, chart here. And then I'm going to Option or Alt drag to copy out uh, another line segment. And I'm dragging in a straight line by holding the Shift key as I do this. So I'm just positioning that there. And now I'm going to use the Blend tool to create uh, a number of lines in between. So let's select both of these lines, and then I'll go over to the blend tool here and grab the blend tool and then click on the top line and click on the bottom line. Now what we're seeing is a blend between the black color up here and down here. So we're going to make an adjustment by going into the blend tool, just double clicking on it. And we can see right now the blend options spacing is set to smooth color. So I want to change this to specified steps. 518. That's a lot. That's why we're seeing solid black there. But here I'm just going to go ahead and type in, let's see, 10. I think that's how many I need and just click OK. And now I have 10 divisions here. Now, when you look at this in outline mode, Commander Control Y, we're not seeing, let's go back here and I'll try that again. We're not seeing um, those copies of that line we're really, this is really live. And so the reason that I like to use the blend tool for this is because if I go back into preview mode, command or control Y, I can easily update and change the number of lines in between here. So if I double click on the blend tool and decide, oh, I want this to be nine steps in between or eight, I can automatically see this. You're going to need to have the preview checkbox checked, but it's incredibly flexible. All right, so I'm going back to 10, click OK, and then I'm going to need some vertical divisions. So to do this, I'm just going to use the same blend that I already have. I'm going to copy it, Command or Control C, and paste in front, Command or Control F. And when I do this, I've got my copy directly on top of the original. I'm just going to grab this and holding the Shift key, I'm just rotating it around. And then I'm going to just extend this line up here. and this would probably be a good time to turn on uh, Smart Guides. Let's go and do that. Command or Control U. And that way I should feel a little snap when I get to the end there. And this is where having that preference setting, scale strokes and effects turned off is going to help us because I can do all of the scaling without changing the line weight. Now I have more divisions here than I need. So I'll go back to the Blend tool and double click on it put my cursor here and just tap the down arrow key. So what I want 
I think are four divisions. So I have Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday. Great. And then just click OK. And so now I have sort of the main part of this chart. And if I go and compare it to my original, you can see how that looks there. So at this point, I could change the color of these just by sort of doing a marquee selection over everything and then going over here to uh, the stroke color and just clicking on maybe a gray color there. And that looks good. Next, I'm going to make the dotted lines, sort of the inner divisions. And so once again, I'm going to take uh, the first blend that I created, copy, paste in front, Commander Control C, Commander Control F. And with that copy, I'm just going to sort of shrink this up, scale it down here till I get to kind of the center. And because this is not expanded yet, because this is still a live blend, I don't really have anything to snap it to. So I'm not being super precise uh, when I do this, but I'm just dragging it to where I think the middle is here and the middle is here. Um, and then I'm going to go and get the blend tool out. Let's see, double clicking on that. And I'll just lower the number of steps in between to nine click OK. And then for this one, I want that to be a dotted line. So I'll go ahead and open up the stroke panel, click on dashed line, and then I can just change, let's see, the length of the dash there. I think that looks good like that. Um, I could also change the stroke weight, the color. Let's try just changing the color really quickly to kind of make that just a little bit more subtle. And then this way I have sort of the half hour divisions here. And as I look at this and I think, well, you know, I think I want these to be wider. Then all I have to do is just sort of marquee select around all three of the blends now. And I can just scale this to make it wider. And instantly um, that happened without having to go in and select anything individually. So this is great. Maybe what I want to do is see if I can make this a little bit thinner. I don't know. That just looks too noticeable to me. All right. So you can tweak it to your heart's content. Um, the next thing that I want to do is just create um, a rectangle here that sort of further emphasizes the difference um, in every hour here. Um, let's see, I'll just pick another color. I'm going to switch the fill in the stroke there and then pick like a really light pink color like that. And then again, this will be a blend. So I'm going to option or alt copy holding shift, just dragging it down here to the bottom and then selecting both of them. And I'll grab the blend tool again click on the top one, click on the bottom one. And now we're creating a blend. It looks like I've gone back to smooth color. So I've double clicked on the blend tool so I can change it to specified steps and then come down here. And I don't know if I need nine or 10. Looks like I need nine. Okay. Because I have preview checked, I can see those changes instantly. Then click okay. And this one I'm going to send to the back. So using the arrange commands or the shortcuts, the shortcut is command or control shift and left bracket. All right, so that was pretty quick. And now I have this time block planner that I can use um, to plan out the new year. All right, now let's make the little check boxes here. So I'm just gonna hold down the shift key and make a square and drag this down here to about that height. And let's go ahead and make these a little bit more fun. I'll make them a color. So let's flip the fill in the stroke and choose maybe a little green, light green color there. Do the same over here, flipping the fill in the stroke. And this time I'm gonna choose maybe a little bit more of a light blue color, just to give some variety there. All right, and let's get our blend tool out. So just clicking on the top one and then the bottom one as they're selected there. And I like the way that gradation looks. So that's great. Now you can edit these individual objects inside of a blend here. So if I select this with the white arrow, I have that selected and I can change the color and you can see the blend update as I do that. This is great. This is new in Illustrator that we see color happening live as we make adjustments in the color panel or in the, uh, in the color picker. Um, so I can come over here and make an adjustment, maybe saturate this a little bit more and see how that blend 
um, updates. So that's pretty fun. The other thing about blends is that they not only go between a color or a number of copies from one to the other, you know, they, they transition. So if I were to make an edit like this, just pulling out that anchor point there, you can see a transition um, from the top shape to the bottom shape. So that's really, blends are extremely versatile. This is only just one way to use them. And then what I can do is just draw a little line here and uh, let's go ahead and give it the same color using my eyedropper, shortcut is I, to sample the color from, and the stroke weight from um, that stroke right there. And then put this here, put another line down here. And again, just adding a blend between those two lines like that. And I can come in here and tweak these a little bit. Another thing that you may wanna do with your blends is expand them. So when I actually want these lines, because as I said before in, uh, preview mode, outline mode, here we are in outline mode, you don't actually see the individual copies because it's still live and editable, uh, but I can expand this. So let's go back up to this time the object menu and down to blend here. And so these are where the menu options for the blend tool are. And release is just gonna take us back to two lines, but I can expand right here and when I do this now in outline mode, you can see those are actual lines. So I'm not gonna be able to go back to a blend here and do an adjustment of the number of um, interim steps, but I do have now lines, paths that I can do other uh, edits to in Illustrator. So that's great. All right, so yeah, blends are super versatile and this is just one way to use them. I'm gonna make a little space for notes down here in my planner. And now we're gonna add type. So let's take a look at some tips I have for that. So to start, I'm gonna create some point type. To do this, you just click once on the artboard with the type tool and I'll type in, let's see, eight o'clock and then hit the return key. Then type in nine o'clock like that hit the return key, and then type in 10 o'clock, et cetera, et cetera. Now, rather than making you wait through all of that, I've got some already finished up here. So this is just a line of type with the uh, little returns in between there. And now, because it's point type, I can just use letting uh, to space them out. First, I wanna come up here to the top control bar and just align these to the right so that they kind of sit up against the column here and then go into the character panel and come over here. And uh, let's see, I'll use my shift key and the up arrow to kind of jump in increments of 10. And then I'll start moving my arrow keys up. Let's get a better view here so I can actually see the whole thing. Then I'll go back to the character panel and just nudge this up, 42, 43, 47. So that looks pretty good. And that's kind of an easy way to just space these out like that. All right, now to work with the type across the top here, let me zoom in maybe too much there. All right, for this, we're gonna work with area type. So different than point type. When you wanna create area type, you need to get your type tool and click and drag. So we're drawing out a box here, and this is really used for like paragraphs of type. And now that I have this dummy copy right in here, what I wanna do is go ahead to the character panel and just set the letting back to normal. We're gonna put it at auto, and then I'm gonna go up here to the alignment and center align this. And I don't want this, Greeking here. Instead, what I'm gonna do is type in Monday and then hit the return key um, and then Tuesday and hit the return key and Wednesday like that. All right, and I can finish those letters up later, but what I wanna do right now is work with the area type options and create columns for this type. So right here with this type selected, I'm gonna go up into the control bar to area type options. You can also find this in the type menu. It's right here, area type options. Either way you open this panel, this is gonna allow us to create columns for this rectangle of type here. So I'm gonna come over to columns and change this for to five, one for every day of the week. And uh, we see that there are spaces here between the columns and that's the gutter. So I'm gonna change this to zero. And while I'm doing that, let me just check fixed here. And now what I can do 
is click OK. And what's going to happen is when I take this lower part of the bounding box here and shrink this up, um, that's going to, as you can see, wherever there is a paragraph return, it's going to bump that over to the next column. So from here, let's go ahead, place our cursor here and then tap return. So I can type in Thursday, return and Friday like that. All right. So now I have sort of the basic setup with the five columns, but I can make this sort of fit here by I'm just lining it up by eye with the edge of the column right there. And then I'm going to just stretch this out. So I'm not stretching the type because this is area type. I'm just um, basically changing the width of those columns as I do this. So that's a super quick way to do this. And it allows me to change anything I want to about the type. So I can come into the character panel here and change this to, let's see, bold like that. Of course, I can change the color a little bit like so. And one thing to be aware of is, um, you know, if you start making the type too big, let's come over here to Wednesday. That's a long word, uh, the longest uh, word in the week. Um, and now if I change this, for example, uh, just coming up here like that, at some point we're going to get to um, a hyphenation here. And my character panel is kind of getting in the way. So um, bear with me for a second. Let me highlight Wednesday and then just make this bigger. And you can see right there, that's when the type gets too big, you get a hyphen and it bumps it over to the next column. So you kind of have to just work between uh, the point size, the width and height of the columns and that sort of thing, just to make sure that this works. Um, but if you do that, then you can always, you know, when you change the width of this column and you just stretch this out, everything will be nicely centered um, on top like that. All right. So those are my tips for making your brand new 2023 planners in Adobe Illustrator. My name is Laura Coyle. I hope you've enjoyed this video. If so, please give me a like and subscribe. Give me a comment if you want to see more videos about Adobe Illustrator. I teach Illustrator and other related Creative Cloud apps on my website, lauracoilcreative.com. I hope you'll come and check me out there and stay tuned for my next video. Thank you for watching.